And so now we come down to it. Next week begins our Holy Week, the height of the Christian year, opening and closing in celebration in the middle three nights of worship in a row, and I encourage you to be there for all of it. And when we encounter the cross, we will hear the proclamation of the new covenant. Father, forgive them. Today you will be with me in paradise, and raised up, I will draw all people to myself. But how? How will Christ draw everyone to him? Will it be like Taylor Swift with awesome music enchanting like a siren? Will it be like Donald Trump with lofty rhetoric overwhelming everyone with lines that built to bring cheers? Will it be like Monk with silly antics humoring young and old alike? In the reading we heard today, Jesus said it will be by dying, by doing that thing none of us welcome, especially at the age of 33, by going to the cross. And this forever makes no sense. No matter how many times I try to explain this and wrap my head around it, in the end, it still makes no sense. The best I explain it, I always find somewhere where I stumble. How does this work, God? How did this moment change the world? Jesus tells it like this. Let me tell you a parable. There was an army vet from the city named Keanu Reeves. He took a walk in the clouds and arrived at a vineyard in Napa Valley where he married a beautiful young woman and became part of her Hispanic family. One night, the ruler of this world set fire to the whole vineyard. Every grapevine was destroyed. The entire crop was lost. Keanu Reeves, desperate to protect his new family, searches the valley for any signs of hope, and he finds it. He finds one plant, the original plant from which all the others came, and discovers that its roots are still intact. Upon discovering life in this obliterated vineyard, Keanu's father-in-law yells, It's alive! It's alive! We can plant! And then he turns to Keanu and says, This is the root of your life. The root of your family. You are bound to this land and to this family by commitment, by honor, and by love. Plant it. It will grow. I don't know how, but it will be beautiful. I could say the same thing about the cross. This is the root of your life, the root of your salvation. Christ was bound to the cross and became the tree of life by sacrifice, by righteousness and by love. Plant this gift of grace in your heart. It will grow. I don't know how, but it will be beautiful. I don't really know how any of this works. I mean, not, not, not scientifically, empirically, measurably. I can't, like, build you a treatise to explain all this. But what I know is this. When the hour arrives, Jesus asks a really important question. He says, Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Should I say, Father, save me from this hour? No. Father, glorify your name. 
In this moment, Jesus changes the entire goal. In this moment, Jesus changes the priority of our lives. What should I say? Never let any trouble come my way? That's not how faith works. No. Father, glorify your name. And that's different from praise God in all things. Jesus doesn't praise God for the trouble that's coming his way. Jesus praises God while facing that trouble. He stands firm in the conviction that even as trouble surrounds him, his life will praise God. And that's so different from the prayer, Lord, don't ever let any trouble come my way. How often is our priority not to have any problems? How often do you find yourself praying, Lord, don't let bad things happen to me? How's that working for you? Because our prayer request list is overflowing right now. And more than that, the prayer, don't let anything bad happen, can't grapple with death, which is what we are facing. I've been grieved so many times when I've ministered to people and heard them say, why won't God just let me die? I've got nothing left. They're facing the greatest troubles of life. And what hurts is their hearts can no longer imagine what it means to praise God. Job, in the Bible, had nothing left. And when everything had been destroyed, do you know what he did? To me, it still baffles me. He knelt down and prayed, Blessed be the name of the Lord. He glorified God, just as Jesus does now. And that's, that's the question of faith. How will this moment glorify God? How will my life praise God today? When you're receiving your paycheck at the end of the month, that's the question. How will this moment glorify God? When you're on the court playing in a sporting event of your choice, that's the question. How will my life right now praise God? When you're driving down the road, jamming out to your favorite tunes, that's the question. How will this moment glorify God? And I'm driving down the road this morning coming to church, and a car shifts the other lane, and I take advantage of it and, and take, go ahead and get a little bit more speed picked up. And then the car in front of them slams on their brakes to turn, and now the car almost serves into me, and I sit there and go, I could have taken a little bit more time. It would have been okay. And not tried to block this car out of another lane. How am I driving? Glorify God. And when you're exhausted and hangry and ready to give up, even then that question remains, how will my life praise God right now? In fact, it might be the most important question at those times, because those are the times we can't imagine praising God. The times we'd rather be doing a whole lot of other things are quite, well, the opposite of praising God. When you sprained your ankle, how will this moment glorify God? When you're raising your children, that's the question. How will I help them glorify God in their lives? And often, often I think the answer is, I honestly don't know how God will be praised through me today. But I know it will be beautiful because I'm open to it happening. That's what Jesus teaches us. He realizes that his hour has come, and he knows exactly what that means, and he says, Father, glorify your name. We are approaching the week of mystery, when hate will be overcome by love, Injustice will be undone by righteousness, and death will be transformed into life. And on the cross, God's name will be glorified. And even though I celebrate it with passion, 
I must be honest. I don't really know how God did it, how salvation came through this moment. But I know it was beautiful. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to like if you heard good news and subscribe to stay up to date on the latest message. Peace be with you.